the BS trading drawdown. And things at the moment have not been great with the markets. I don't know if you've noticed, but the markets have been coming down a lot. And it's not just here in South Africa, but I've seen it in the US, I've seen it with cryptocurrencies. It looks like a crash is on its way. And I don't want to sound dramatic, but the uptrend for the year is broken down. And it means that if you're long in the markets and you're bullish, um, or you're holding a lot of long positions, that there is a chance that you will be taking a couple of losing trades. My portfolio is personally down about 5% right now since the peak of September, uh, but we have had a very good year. And now that's why today I want to actually talk about a drawdown because it is inevitable whether you're an investor or a trader and it will come and you've got to know how to manage the drawdowns. And this is one thing that a lot of companies and brokers fail to teach their clients and customers because all they focus on is that the customer is taking trades rather than how the customers, uh, the, the, the clients are managing their trades in the meantime. So let's start with the first question and that is what is a drawdown? Let's start with SEAL. If you draw a chart of your account balance, ideally it should be going up from the uh, bottom left corner of the chart to the top right corner. Um, if you have a series of losing trades, it will pull back and the distance it goes down is your drawdown before it resumes. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to add on anything more. I think Martin. Uh... Okay, so I will like to share my idea of what a drawdown is because it is a little bit subjective within the type of traders that you are. Because if you are a, a high frequency trader, you'll be taking a lot of drawdowns pretty much on a daily basis. But when you're a position trader and you're holding a lot of uh, 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 positions in, in a long period of time, then the drawdowns will kick in after a bit of time. So a drawdown is a drop in a portfolio value after one or more trades. It's when the portfolio dips from the highest high. And once you've entered into this drawdown phase, you'll need to know exactly how much you'll need to recover. And that's why we're going to be talking about today's event, which is the BS Trading Drawdown. And I'm going to break it down into a series of maybe two or three events, depending on what we do. So I'm just going to the next slide quickly. And that was what is a drawdown. So, so we've now mentioned what it is. It's a drop in the portfolio value from the highest high and now it's dipping. And when you are uh, in a drawdown phase, you need to know exactly what you need to do to recover from it and also how much you need to recover. So we have some new people. Lionel Semaine, hi there, welcome. Are you a trader, investor? Feel free to introduce yourself uh, or enjoy the event. It's entirely up to you. Okay, then we have the next question because we've dealt with the drawdown. Let's just see how I've done this. Okay, the BS drawdown, question number two. What was your worst drawdown and how did you personally recover? Let's go with Dr. Sam. How did you recover from your worst drawdown? Uh, um Timon, I didn't recover. It was during the WorldCom crisis around, I think, 2004 or 2008, I think, was the, and I didn't recover. I lost my entire portfolio. And if you go back and you, and you, you, you now have uh, sight in hindsight, how would you recover in the, in, in the, um, if, if you could go back, what would you do to recover from those losses? Or what would you do differently? Uh, well, I wouldn't. I, I I wouldn't have in. I wouldn't have 
put in uh, 70 or 80 percent of my portfolio into WorldCom shares. That was a, it was a foolish thing to do. It was a naive naive thing to do. Um, so I would have I would have minimized my risk and spread and spread my my risk amongst a number of <coughs> of stocks. But I concentrated uh, most of my portfolio in one stock. And I had a good rally for maybe six or eight months. I probably trebled my money, and I think greed set in. All right, so diversification would have helped. Uh, portfolio allocation with the amount of money that you would have put into those stocks would have helped. And also, the most important thing is acknowledging that things can go wrong and that you know what the maximum you can lose based on the amount of money that you put in that's that's what i've picked up martin yep i've blown my account lots of times over the years um what would you do differently um risk a smaller amount i suppose uh stop your losers quickly let your winners run maybe use a trailing stop all very Always good trades closely which i I always do anyway yes and um, then we have seal what are your thoughts now that you know what a drawdown is and um, some ideas of what you can do I've never actually done it so I've never been in a position where I have to recover I'm a new investor all right and what are you uh, investing in if I'm if I may ask <clears throat> um, so far, I've bought shares of um, Cisco, Apple, not many shares, and I ended up selling those um, for a little bit more than what I paid. So I made a small fraction of money, but not a lot. And do you have a strategy as to, with the amount of money that you put in, what the maximum you can lose? Yes, I will only invest money that I'm comfortable losing. So it's Very not good. my savings, nor is it my emergency fund. It's only investment money. All right, that's very, very good. I think that's the top thing that you got to do is that when you are trading and investing, you must never trade and invest with your emotions. Once you do that, you're going to find ways to go against your current strategy and lose. But in saying that, with the amount of money that you're willing to lose. The big question you got to ask is, if you lose that money, do you have more money that you're willing to lose? Because what if that's it? And then you give up because of your learning, uh, learning fees, uh, learning school fees. So the idea is when you are a beginner trader or an investor, take that amount. So let's say it's about, I don't know, let's say about a hundred thousand dollars or no let's yeah let's go with a hundred thousand dollars with your starting portfolio and this is a hundred thousand dollars that you can risk and you can cut it up and put it into pieces Th but can you risk another hundred thousand dollars if no then don't see the hundred thousand dollars as your portfolio account entirety rather take the hundred thousand dollars and break it up into segments and say okay here's my hundred thousand dollars that i'm willing to risk I am going to trade with $20,000 only. Does that make sense? So risk 2% on the $20,000 because you're still learning to trade, you're still learning to invest, and a lot of people get wrong as they say, I've got the money, therefore I qualify to be a trader and investor. I disagree with that. You, you, to qualify, you have to be able to know what you're doing with exact precise uh, precision because if you go to you know if you go play poker and you go gambling and you put in your ten thousand dollars it's going to be wiped out within before you know it and why is that because you're not a poker player you're a gambler and i see the same with trading is that with um, trading if you are new see the money that you're losing within your experimental time as school fees these are your learning school fees. Does that make sense? 
Show me some emojis. Hello, Eleanor 2D2D. D2D. Welcome and hello. Are you an investor or trader? Feel free to introduce yourself or not. Feel free to uh, enjoy the event. It's entirely up to you. We then have... Oh, they popped out. Okay. So what it was... Oh, hello there. Yes, Dr. Garbage. Are you a trader and investor? Uh, yes, I'm an investor uh, here in the US. I'm investing in the, the Dow Jones and also in, uh, in Brazil. A very welcome to you. And what are your thoughts? So basically, this is a trading discussion that I run every week. It's the 15th one. Uh, that I've actually opened now to the public. And basically it's a discussion event on where I ask a question and then we go around the table and then I share my thoughts. So my name's Timon Rosalimos. I've been a tra trader for 19 years and this is an absolute passion to create a community of traders where we can all learn and gain um, um, insight on how to trade. So Dr. Garbage, what technique do you have when you are um, uh, when you are in the current drawdown? Uh, I would also revert back to what is my long, what was my strategy. For instance, uh, if it is long term, I cannot get nervous saying, okay, I have to cut the losses. No, my goal, I got to remind myself, my goal is to sell this in one, two years. Of course, there's going to be drawbacks. So there's going to be down, the market is going to go down like it like as is right now so based on that i mean i have cold thinking and stick to the plan very good and what i consider you as a medium term investor and they are amazing because you know you can actually take on the trading approach when you're holding for one year or two years uh instead of the buffett approach where you're holding for 25 years you hold for one or two years purely uh, now, I know, I know I don't have your reasons, but one of the major reasons why people are investing for a lot shorter term is because of how the algorithms have changed over the years with the price movements within a market. So before, say 50 years ago, a monkey could have bought any high liquid or volatile stock and hold it for 50 years and then become a millionaire just because most of the stocks trended up. Nowadays, and I mean, by nowadays, I mean since 2011 and the algorithms changed, there is such choppiness within the market that it's better to hold while the market trends up. And then during the consolidation, which can take seven to eight years, and um, we see this with sectors, it's good to close those positions, reanalyze, reevaluate, and then get into new positions. So I actually see that as a form that you can use for trading as well where you can look at the fundamentals and you can even look at the technicals for holding positions on longer terms. Thank you and very welcome to you, Dr. Garbage. You. I love these names. Every day I come up, I see these amazing names. Like right now there was a guy in here called a cup of tea. My favorite pattern as a trader for, for 19 years has been a cup of tea. Or I actually call it a cup of tea, but it's, uh, it's um, a cup and handle pattern. Loot House, are you a trader or an investor? And welcome to Mutty Trader event. Feel free to say hello or not. Elena, also feel free to say hello. I haven't put on the allow hand participation raises because we haven't got enough people yet, but it will pick up. It normally picks up after the first half an hour. So we have today. So basically a drawdown is there are a lot of different scenarios that you can have with drawdowns. So just so you know, for those who've just joined, a drawdown is basically when your portfolio has gone up beautifully and it's made the high of the, the charts and the portfolio and then it enters into this series of losses, which are inevitable. With all stock markets and all stock indices, they all zigzag. So, the trick is to find out strategies on what you can do to limit your drawdown, to increase your win rate, 
um, and to deal with it emotionally on an emotional basis, which is also very important. So the question was, what was your worst drawdown and how did you recover? I'm not going to give you ways to tell you how to recover because I want to do that for the next series. But I do want to tell you a, an important calculation that you will need as a trader to find out what you need to recover when you are in a drawdown. Another thing that they don't teach you at school or university or business school is that when you're in a drawdown, what do you need to recover? So let's move to the final question of today. It's a short event, but let's just see. Aha. All right, sorry. Oh. I have to make the screen smaller. They changed the world building editor Are you again. On the computer? I'm on the computer, yes. You have a quest? I, I do, but I don't have the right computer for the quest. <laughs> what a dilemma. And I'm also in South Africa, so they don't they don't have those type of computers or quests available yet. Understood. So the question is, but I, I will rectify that very soon. I'm just waiting for uh, everybody to either bring the quest. Uh, I'm waiting for them to bring the quest here. Or I'm waiting for all the kinks to be uh, ironed out before buying it. So the question is, if I'm down 5%, 15%, 50%, 50 or 75% of my portfolio, how much do I need to recover? And I actually did this question for Flupperchip. Um, who, who isn't here today uh, because he loves maths. But are there any mathematicians who would like to give their, um, their calculation, how they would calculate that if you're down 5% or 15%, what would you need to recover to get your portfolio back to where it was and out of the drawdown? Let's go with, are you, uh, Dr. Garbage, are you into maths? Yeah, I mean, I would say if you're down 5%, I mean, logically, you have to give back to 5% plus for you to give back to the drawdown, right? We can say yes and no, uh, because with trading, it's never black and white. Because the thing is, when you're buying stocks, you're not just, you're not just down 5%, you're also down a certain percentage, including the costs. And the cost you've always got to take into consideration because if you're down 5%, you get out of your position, but you still have to pay an extra percentage, uh, extra couple of percentage due to the costs and also time decay depending on what instruments you're at. So with options, you're, there is a time decay within the options that you choose of the markets, which means that it's expense, it's even more expensive the next day than the day you held it. Okay, so if you're down, say, 50% of the portfolio, Dr. Sam, how much do you need to recover? You probably need to recover your full 50% plus, plus all your costs. Okay, so what if I told you that you need to recover 100% of your portfolio? Think about it. If you, uh, if I you, wouldn't dispute it. If you're down, if you have a hundred dollars and you're down to fifty dollars, you need to make fifty dollars. Correct. Wait till you you hear this. If you're down seventy five percent of your portfolio, how much do you think you need? Or seventy six percent of your portfolio, how much do you need to recover? Yeah, three hundred percent. Three hundred and sixteen percent. So these are important yeah. factors to take into account because if you're a trader that drops 76% of your portfolio, to gain that 300% can take you years just to get back to scratch. And that's why drawdown management is important because you need to avoid that from happening before you enter into that, that uh, high percentage drawdown. So in business and with trading and investing, you should never be down more than 20% of your portfolio, right? 
Yeah, even that's a lot. 20% is, is, is probably for me the maximum where I actually stop trading and I let the market environment go into a more favorable environment. Um, but basically we need to, in, in, this, in this episode or in this event, the main trick is to find out how to recover. So I'm going to give you a calculation that you can use to reco recover. And this is excluding costs. And here it is. So the drawdown formula is the required gain is equal to 1 divided by open brackets 1 minus percentage loss close brackets minus 1. Write that formula down for when you're doing drawdown management and you'll find that you'll be able to find out exactly what you need to recover during a drawdown. Okay, so if you're down 5% of your portfolio, as Dr. Garbage says, you need 5.26% of your portfolio to recover. If you're down 50%, you need 100% of your portfolio to recover. And if you're down 76%, you need 316% of your portfolio. So do you now get that you need to take your drawdowns a lot more seriously with any business or venture and you need to be wary when you enter into that tough time. And you should be aware that once you are down 20% of your portfolio or business or any venture, that you need to take action in order to prevent the inevitable where the portfolio will continue going down. And as traders and investors, drawdown management is the only thing that you can use to prevent your portfolio from, from blowing up. And it's our responsibility. So does anyone have any questions now about the drawdown, drawdown phases and maybe examples or experiences that you have. Dr. Sam? Uh, Timon, I, I, I don't. I, I think it, uh, I understand exactly what's going on. Um, I haven't had this situation for a while now, fortunately. Uh, so, no. Thanks. Martin? I find it's a good idea to do a spreadsheet and put formulas in it and then you can just enter your balance in there and have it calculate it for you. I think you should have a, an entire Excel document on just a drawdown on your just your drawdown management because we can find out what percentage we need to recover but then we need to find out when does the portfolio reach a certain level where we need to stop trading lower our risk or reanalyze or evaluate the strategy within it. And there are many ways that you can do that. And I actually call it trading your equity curve. But I think we can save that for next week with the drawdown. I know we early in time today. Uh, I think it's the end of the end of the month and it's Halloween. And um, I actually have a Halloween mask on. So I feel part of the, the Halloween spirit. You'll see it on, on Facebook if you go and watch the live one. You'll be quite shocked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you should have an entire Excel spreadsheet on all of, all of the aspects to a drawdown. Seal, your thoughts? Well, I find myself thinking about possible exceptions to the strategy. Case in point, let's say that you had stock in something which dropped precipitously in value. Um, like Apple stock did a few weeks ago, um, right after the split. Um, <clears throat> if you followed this formula to the letter, you would have seen that, wow, I'm losing almost 20% of my investment in Apple. I had better get rid of it. Yet, a month later, it rose substantially in value. So I would think that one possible exception to this rule would be those stocks which you think rep are in companies which have good fundamentals which you are going to hold for the extremely long term. I mean, it's the, uh, the, the tw I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, it's entirely dependent on the approach that you're taking with your investment or trading strategy. Because as a trader, we have something called stop losses. And we know exactly 
what the maximum we are willing to lose if the market goes against us. As an investor, mm -hmm. there are many other ways to protect your portfolio from, um, from extended losses. And even if you look at Warren Buffett's or Benjamin Graham's criteria, you will see that there's certain criteria of with the PE reaching a certain level, with the earnings, um, with the expectation of earnings, with the uh, number of years that the the companies have released profits at a certain level above the normal distribution. They all have their reasons to hold and exit. And most investors believe in the hold strategy for long term, but they don't have the exit strategy, which is the most, the second most important is the exit strategy. Getting in should have a complete criteria as to why you're doing it. And the exit strategy should be not only based on the best case scenario, but also the worst case scenario. So with Apple, when you said, if Apple dips and we know that there's good results and um, uh, things are looking good for the company fundamentally, well, then it depends on the fundamental strategy that you're using to hold it. Because the, the being down 20% on Apple we're now asking what 20% are you down on Apple? Is it your entire portfolio? Well, this most likely you should reevaluate your, your entire uh, investing strategy because if you're down 20% on a stock and you're holding six different stocks, you can blow your account if all six stocks go down at the same time. And this has got nothing to do with fundamentals. This has got to do with the demand and supply within the, um, the, the market's movements worldwide the global movements of demand and supply outweigh the fundamentals in the short and medium term just enough for the markets to collapse 30 to 40 percent where you can blow your account before it even turns up and goes to all new time highs does that make sense seal yeah yes it does so everything should be written down everything should be created as if it's a game plan trading and investing is a sport and you got to know exactly the best case and worst case scenarios at all times. And most people forget about the worst case scenarios. They don't believe it. And when things are going well, they believe that things are going to continue. We cannot predict the future. We can only predict probabilities of where the future is more likely to head based on what current factors are taking place. All right. Welcome, Mackenzie. I don't know if you're a trader or an investor. This is actually the end of the uh, trading event. But if you are a trader or investor, feel free to introduce yourself and say hi. Um, well, How old are you, Mackenzie? Um, well, um, I'm 10. ten. 10 years old. I started at 16. Yeah. You're never too young to start learning. So you probably never heard of these terms, but trading and investing, go ask your parents about it. They're, they'll be very impressed. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, that sums it up. I don't know if anybody has any final conclusions or thoughts, and then uh, you can go and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks, Timon. All right. Bye from me. Keep well, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See, now you know what a drawdown is when you take that VR headset off. Yes, now I know. Thank you. Have a good one. See you next week. Martin, always a pleasure. Thank you. Mackenzie, keep cool.